I'm here with Andrea Parsons, um, and she teaches in Dauphin County. And you have an interesting project dealing with art. Describe the age groups that you teach and a little bit about your project. Okay, I have uh, freshmen through seniors, and our uh, project this year was based on a, a graphic design course uh, constructed by uh, Christopher Eppie. And he asked if I would be interested in having some of my students participate. And I, of course, was really excited for the opportunity because we don't get to do things like this very often. And I had 30 names on a list, and I talked to the students and gave them an opportunity to participate, and 20 of them decided to do it. And the whole project, the goal of the project, was to create a piece of narrative art. And we, we, we struggled, and we, we worked hard to talk about what kind of story they wanted to tell. And um, I had some great conversations with some students, uh, some very conversations. I had students who told stories about dreams, about books they've read, um, and I even have a couple of students that illustrated the loss of their parents. And that was that was really, really hard for us. We we had some very emotional days in class together. But they had to be a very therapeutic oh, uh, experience for the youngster. Absolutely. Uh, I, I don't think that I have ever done a project with my students that has been more therapeutic than what this one has. Okay. Um, are, are there things that you'll be dip, doing differently as you go forward related to this project? Um, I, we are going to display these projects again at our school uh, on May the, 3rd, May the 7th will be that date and then they'll actually get to go to Mount Hart Center for a while this summer probably. and um, I, it does open my eyes to the importance of being able to, we've always done emotional expression, expression pieces in art, but to be able to express something that is very important to them and very personal to them, has, it, it, it does open my eyes to how we need to go in the future. Now, uh, is there any way that people that are viewing this can see this on the holler or is it other uh, is it gonna be the actual there? class is on the, the holler and uh, you probably should just search for online classes when you get into the holler and they are there and anyone can take them. They're uh, free of charge. Uh, the, the graphic design course is the one that, that we took there around ones by there. So uh, how long have you been teaching and why did you go into teaching? I went into teaching because of my art teacher that I had in high school and um, I just she was such an impact on my life that I wanted to be able to do the same thing for my students or for other students and this is my 22nd year. Okay. Well how have students changed? Um, if that's, I know that's a difficult question but when you think of over two decades it's a new generation or a couple new generations and is there any analysis that you can provide about how students might be different than that. Well, I know that I have changed. I have become more aware, and I don't know, maybe it, maybe the problems weren't as severe as they are now, but uh, students have a lot to deal with in their personal lives. And I don't know if, if in the beginning I wasn't as aware, but now that I have learned to develop relationships with my students, which I feel is the most important thing about teaching, it's not, it's not everything that I tell them and I instruct them about art. It's about helping them be the best person that they can be also. What are the skills that you've had to develop a little bit more in order to be an effective teacher today versus when you first started? Probably compassion. I definitely have become a more compassionate person. Um, you know, I, I, have, I love my job more every day. And um, I, I, I think I've just opened my eyes to what life is for these kids and, and, and any way that I can help them, I, always, I just try. You know, I, I can only do what I can do, but I sure try. Well, we know McGoffin County has some special challenges. Yes. Uh, like much of other Eastern Kentucky, I think you all lost the, the, the last coal mine in that community a, a year or so ago and so it's always had one of the highest unemployment rates so that has to create some special challenges 
for the parents as well as for the teachers. It does, and we, we have a lot of students that leave. You know, I'll go in one day and I'll, I'll say, where's so-and-so? You know, they have to they have to you know it's, it's really hard. We, we have a lot of turnaround. Sometimes they come back. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's a bleak time. Uh, I'm hoping something will happen and, and things may change. I don't know. But, uh, we also lost a, a factory. We had a, a factory and lost it. Yeah, so we've had those economic challenges, but still, the students that you see, they're our future. So how do you feel about the future based on knowing that who these new leaders are well, going to be? Have, we have wonderful students. We have bright, talented, gifted, strong leaders. Yeah. And I have no doubt that if they will strive to, to move forward, that they can, they can do something. They, they can come back and, and lead us in a way that... Hopefully we can turn everything around and, and just move forward. Well, Andrew, appreciate everything that you're doing, and thank you for being on the show. Thank you. I appreciate it.